Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our program brought to you by Benedict Construction. And the best advertising I can ever do for any of my clients is to say, here's what they did for me. And it's even easier when I show you, because here is what they did for me. Benedict Construction built this beautiful set. And for those of you, well, Mike Griffith left and we were on the old set. Yeah. Now you came back. A little bit of a difference. A little bit of a difference. A lot of a little bit of a difference. Bit. Here's a lot of a difference. Beautiful stuff from Benedict Construction. And the trick is, on budget, on time. That's, that's what you're looking for from construction company. And the other thing, Dan Benedict, owner of the company, was here every single day. Benedict Construction, I'm telling you. All right, in this segment, quickly, I want to give you some comparisons of the three quarterbacks from 98, 01, and 16. Let's put this up here. Interesting, the numbers for Josh Dobbs aren't as off as some folks may think. In terms of your game started last year, we used Dobbs numbers for 13. He had one more game. You see the completion percentages, his is down there, but it's above T. Martin. People forget that T. Martin was, they remember the South Carolina game when he <laughs> went nuts. They remember that. Uh, you see the yardage, the big difference, the big thing, and we've talked about it all offseason, eight yards, 8.1 yards per pass for T. Martin, 8.4 for Casey Clawson, the pure drop back passer, 6.7 for Dobbs. That's got to come up. It's not all on him. You've had some inconsistent receivers with some drops, but that number has to come up this year. TD and interception, it's hard to complain about a three to one ratio, but look what he does in rushing yards. For those who thought, well, T. Martin was great on his legs, okay. He wasn't Josh Dobbs great with his no. legs. 11 touchdowns, 600 yards rushing. Uh, he gives you something that the other two didn't. And, and the, back to T. Martin for a second, he had games in 98 where he completed 34% of his passes, 35%, 35%, 37%, and 46%. And we got people that talk about Josh Dobbs, well, he's a terrible passer because he completes 55 or 59%. A little better than 35%. But the trick is, T. Martin would hit Peerless Price or Cedric Wilson once or twice a game on a deep ball, change the whole memory that everybody has. Thoughts on those three guys. I'll start with Will Overstreet on this one. I said I was going to close with you. I'll start with you on this one. Okay. Uh, since you played with two of those guys, obviously let's take winning out of it because right. that's clearly the difference right now. Right. So let's take that out of it. Dobbs is a different style. Of, all three of those guys are a little different from each other. How do you compare them? Can Dobbs be up there with a T. Martin or Casey Clawson? I think he definitely can. I mean, I think he has the ability because he does. I mean, you can't discount him and just compare him as a passer to those guys and say his running, his, run, his ability to run the ball takes away, you know, from his ability as a quarterback. I mean, he's not the same quarterback. He's a different type guy. Uh, I think the difference is of why maybe he doesn't get as much credit at this point is because the offense is so dependent upon him. You know, T. Martin could hand it off. You know, yeah. Casey Clawson and could hand a lot. They, they ran 60% of the time that year. Exactly. And what they were trying to do was not have this hurry up offense. The problem that UT has when a guy like Dobbs has a bad series, it's so quick, puts the defense back on the field so quick, that puts you in a bad situation because that defense is not ready to play at that point in time. So him having a bad series is very noticeable because bad things will happen after that. Um, Mike Griffith, we on this show many times, and this is going to be music to your ears, many times we've done shows where we talk about most underrated of all and that kind of thing. It's Casey Clawson, all right? Uh, your thoughts. I'll let you do your little Clawson dance here. Uh, but Clawson, <laughs> Martin versus Dobbs. Give me, you got, you got 60 seconds. Well, well, they're all playmakers. And that, that's why they're all special quarterbacks. And Dobbs, I think, is in that same league already with T and Casey. He does not have the supporting cast. Uh, I think we, you know, demonstrated that in the last segment, particularly at receiver. Mm -hmm. um, you got to have playmakers at receivers. I'll put that uh, yards per reception squarely on what these receivers do or don't do after the catch. They have potential, but you got to meet it at some point. Well, and, and and also it's you know the spread offense, you know, and I've still got to wrap my brain around it. I haven't really covered a spread offense yet. I've seen elements of it. Michigan State somehow manages to do all these different facets and and do them well, but. Um, you know, I think Dobbs throws the ball as well as T. I don't think his arm is as strong, but T did have accuracy issues. The big thing was these guys all were very good at avoiding negative plays and putting their teams in bad down and distance. They all had three different offensive coordinators also. I didn't really tell you anything that you didn't already know, but that's that's my thoughts on it. You never can. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's for taking a shot at the segment last night. Mike, your thoughts? I, I think Casey Clawson, like we said, was a – these guys don't touch Casey in terms of passing the ball, but you know we in that '98 season. You're right about T. Up until the Georgia game, there were a lot of doubts about T. Mm -hmm. is, is he going to be able to get it done? And he came through. I think in the second half of Georgia is the way I remember it. 
and, and then went on and, and seemed to be comfortable. But there were a lot of doubts about him uh, early on in that year. And he was a guy that also made, he could throw 35% completions for a game and then make one big play. I mean, he was terrible passing the ball against Syracuse in, in his yeah. first game. But he had that one big run that helped, on, helped him win that game late in the fourth quarter. Uh, Bob Hodge very quickly got about a minute. Um, for the offense Tennessee's running right now, I mean, obviously, out of those three guys, Josh Dobbs would be your choice. The right one. Because he can throw, he can run better than the other two. Casey Clawson was a, was a pro-style passer, dropped back, got in the pocket. You've just moved on from that. I think Dobbs, I don't think he can surpass Casey Clawson. He's a senior. The only way he does it is for this team to go into, like, the Final Four and Win be the in the SEC national is, championship. Yeah. But I don't think he can surpass him. I don't think he can surpass T as far as the winning, like you said, throw that out. But as far as what he does on the field, yeah, I think he can be right there with them. Just very quick, the 15 seconds. It, it's become, I think it's one of these things that started as a snowball with some truth to it. There was a kernel of truth, somebody rolled it down a mountain, and then the snow built up, and now it's this giant snowball that, well, Dobbs has some accuracy issues. And it's somehow grown into Dobbs is terrible as a passer. And I just don't think that's the case. And when you look at T. Martin, it's a reminder that you don't have to be the most accurate guy in the world to be successful on the field. If Dobbs and his receivers, Preston Williams, for example, can start connecting once or twice a game, you're talking about a whole different offense and a whole different season. All right. Uh, when we come back to the defenses, this is interesting. Are there any areas, defensive line maybe, where Tennessee might match up with the 98 and 01 teams? We've still got plenty more to come on the Sports Source. Stick around.